क्षणक्षा कणश विद्यामर्थ च साधयता क्षण त्यागे कुतो विद्या कण त्यागे कुतो धनम नॉलेज शुड बी गेन थ्रू मिनिट बाय मिनिट एफर्ट्स मनी शुड बी अर्न यूटिलाइजिंग ईच एंड एवरी रिसोर्स इफ यू वेस्ट टाइम हाउ कैन यू गेट नॉलेज इफ यू वेस्ट रिसोर्सेज हाउ कैन यू एक्यूबलेट अ वेल्थ a very warm welcome to respected dignitaries faculty members and my mba class of 24 to today's fireside chat this event is an integral part of the curriculum that school of management has structured for its students to help them nurture into individuals with holistic growth that encompasses on imparting knowledge on key changes in the management world right from decent topics of interest to use of big data analytics in today's scenario to topics such as managing career in the corporate world this event and events like these have helped our students to build their network as well as let them get a, get a sneak peek into the corporate world today's session will be moderated by dr richa mishra who holds more than 20 plus years of experience in the education sector prior to joining bml munjal university as an associate professor with school of management she was associated with jk lakshmipat university jaipur as assistant director center for communication and critical thinking ma'am please join us over here I would now request our panel members to please join us on the stage. I now request I now request Dr. Ritu Chikara, Associate Professor of Marketing and Head, Center for Sustainability Research and Advocacy at School of Management. to present a token of appreciation to our panel members i now introduce our panel members you can have sanjay suri who is a change enabler mentor edx speaker and consultant former chro tesla power usa Mr. Farasat Ullah Khan, Senior General Manager and Head, Learning and Development, SRA Diagnostics. <laughs> Ms. Arshna Bharadwaj, Head HR of Interglobe Air Transport. I now request Professor Deepak Pandit to please join us on the stage. <clears throat> Our next panel member is Mr. Monse C. Abraham, Director, Thep Management Specialist and Thought Leader. You may come in first. Next, we have Mr. Network Adil. So, has been associated with Hyundai for a very long period of time, and is currently, uh, and is currently working with Hyundai in the. changing so rapidly in these 
days that we never have seen home. The workplaces are changing, the work relationships are changing, and the reasons some in. Uh, there are socio political changes, there are economic changes. And I think one of the most important things that has happened in recent history is pandemic. We talk of two worlds now, you know, pre and post pandemic. So I think the important question that comes to us as somebody who is teaching and the other part of it, somebody who is learning. What is it that we should do to stay relevant in the times to come? You know, that is where I think we thought this is the platform and this is the topic where we would request all of you uh, to you know, express, share your thoughts and guide our students and us with regard to what skills they should have so that they still are relevant you know, five years from now. So that is where I hand over the stage to all of you. And uh, I would request Harshit to introduce our first panelist. Now to commence the session, we have a first speaker, Lieutenant Sandhya Suri. She is a change enabler with 28 years of diversified experience in human resources, operations, sales, brand strategy, and logistics. She is a TEDx inspirational speaker who focuses on individual and team transformation, talent assessment for students, veterans, lean team mapping, performance enhancement, communication, leadership, and team synergy. She focuses primarily on bridging the industry academy a gap. Recipient of several awards, including Learning and Development Lead of the Year 2022, awarded by NMCBI. She is also an author and a Pushcart Prize nominee poet. She will be addressing us upon identifying your industry niche through academia phase to 100% employability or entrepreneurship. Over to you, ma'am. Hi, good morning to you all. Thank you so much and thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm not so sure if many of you have met me before. How many of you have met me before? I'm just trying to identify the five interns who were there with me a couple of months ago uh, at Tesla Power USA. We had five girls from your university and it was an absolute pleasure. So I do know that there is a lot of energy, there's a lot of flexibility uh, that you learn and get through and we see it when you come in for your internship. They had no clue what they were getting into. Let me tell you that right from the start. They thought it would be a nice plush office. They faced about three weeks of uh, lack of AC in the middle of the beginning of summer and that's how life is going to be for you. You won't know what you're going to get into. So how do you prepare for a future that you've not seen? And you're asking us who have no clue what your future is going to be to tell you what you're going to be probably seeing in the future. Um, that's ironical, but it's also the truth. You have a learning curve and we all have a learning curve. And uh, that's what it means to be in this lifetime right now. You are forever changed every second minute or even a nanosecond for that matter. Today, when I walked in, I met a couple of people, we exchanged a few views. I'm not, I cannot undo those things. And you will not be able to undo what you learned today, but you will also be teaching us so many things in times to come. So it's a give and take. And that's what the future scenario is like. It's a gift, give and take. So how do you prepare while in academia for something that's gonna happen later in the industry? Do not become people who learn just by rote. What's in the books is just a key to opening a door. Most of us think the door is shut. Nobody said the door is locked. You have to be able to turn the knob and step in and experiment for yourself and experience for yourself what you need to become. So when you want to identify your niche in the industry, <coughs> Let's start with the absolute basics. What do you want to do in your life? I want to be happy. 
That's where it comes to. I want to be successful. I want to be happy. And how do you get to becoming happy? Not by doing things that everybody else is doing, but identifying your desire to the T. Identifying what you're good at. Identifying the skills you will require to become better at what drives your passion. And once you find that niche for yourself, you have to be able to identify a problem that you can solve when you step out. Because when you identify somebody's problem to solve, people want you. So even when you're applying for a job, which most of you must be thinking, I need to land a job. No. You need to land into a happy space for your own growth. And it cannot only be employability, it can also be entrepreneurship. Most of you at some point when you start working will say, I should have done my own thing. Okay? I am 50 years old and I keep thinking that every six months. And then every six months I deep dive and see what I can do. And that is what life is constantly about. Taking risks. And if you want to be successful, you will have to end up taking those risks. But you don't necessarily have to take a risk with a lot of improbables that you have or variables which you are not knowing. You will have unknown variables. But the point is to lessen it. People part with money only for two reasons. One, when they are happy. How many of you go shopping when you are happy? Happily part with money, get a great bargain, shop. How many of you shop when you are depressed? Why? Retail therapy? But what are you doing? You are trying to make yourself feel better. People part with money only for two reasons. One, if they are happy. Second, if you solve their problem. Identify a problem, find a way to solve it, test it out, check with people whether they're going to be able to part with money to solve that problem and then dive in. Which means you're going to turn the tables around this way. It's all about what you want to do. That's not the only thing. I want to become successful, I want to become happy, I have a goal, I have a vision. But to get to that vision, what I might require is actually to solve someone's problem because that's where the money is. And we all want to get rich. When you have someone who says money is not everything in life, please make sure you're sitting in a Beamer or a Mercedes or you know, in a plush yacht. Because if you're saying that before that, you're being delusional. And most of you do understand that since you're sitting here doing an MBA definitely want to earn money, definitely want to be successful people. Everything is not possible for you to excel in. Please also remember that. There are areas your strengths lie in and there are areas you wouldn't want to touch. It's the same for everybody. So even when you're doing, say for example, let me take an example of uh, human resources. How many of you are for HR over here? First years? HR? and marketing, HR and finance, marketing and finance. So you see you've picked certain subjects that you want to get into. Even in HR, you've got various things. Someone wants to tell me, ke, hey, you know, as CHRO, you have to do data analytics. I hate data. I'm not a data person. I'm a people person. Show me people. I understand them. I get them. Show me data, I'm like, these are just numbers. All right? But it doesn't mean that's not relevant. It is relevant. Every single angle or aspect, for example, of HR or marketing is relevant. But you will have to pick what you're really strong at and let somebody else be the expert at something else. That's why you have teams. Your lean team needs to be covering the gaps that you have. Don't bother covering the gaps with trying to only learn what you're weak in. Which doesn't mean you flunk your weak subjects, please. You will still have to get those credits. But understand that that's not going to be the end all and be all of your life. 
your life should be about what really triggers your energy in the morning and you get to work or you get to do your own business or entrepreneurship whatever it is that you're doing you should be excited about it in the morning when you wake up you should be sleeping with the thought ki hey tomorrow i got to go to and do this that's a lot of hope that's a lot of aspiration and that's what you need to carry with you in terms of what will last in 2 years from now i have no idea literally of what you could possibly be doing none of us sitting here in this forum have an idea trust me when i was 13 I didn't think I would be standing here speaking, right? I didn't even know I would ever end up with a smartphone in my hand. We used to have PP numbers in an entire building. There would be just one phone, and everybody would go, and we would be nice enough to say, "Hey, you got a call? Come." You had to book a call to speak to somebody in another town. It used to be called a trunk call, and it would take hours. for someone to connect you we have come from that space to this space so what have i required in this entire time of being somebody from gen x to sitting and you know to be speaking to an audience which is mostly gen z is i had to transit i had to adapt and i had to be very very agile about it the reason why i get along with youngsters is not because uh you know i've had exposure to a lot of things i've had to learn every single day and that's what you will need to do two things do not let go of one is your emotional intelligence please build it up and develop it it will be required second thing is your adversity quotient what is an adversity quotient it's not even something that has come in right now people talk about agility but when you advance agility a step further post covid especially you have to have a very strong adversity quotient that means you should know when you're faltering you're getting depressed you're feeling low how to get out of it that is going to be important because you're going to be working as managers as leaders and you have to get your own team out of it you will be part of a team and then you will eventually become leaders and leadership is not about uh, getting a chair and holding on to it for dear life no it isn't it's about the wisdom of knowing when to let go of that chair and have someone else some other expert sit in when it's time and that's where your gaps exist sometimes where you are still theoretical about everything but the adaptation is required the agility is required to adapt what you've learned and transform it into what's there on the table and trust me you're still going to be dealing with people with gray hair for a longer time unless you become an entrepreneur and say i i don't want to work with old dads i want to start my own thing so to be able to withstand old age opinions because that's what the industry is also going to give you you cannot deny it you cannot run away from it but what you've got to do is to be able to have the tactfulness to be able to handle that to be able to gently nudge them into generation z you're not going backwards you're always going to be going forward but to take those people along and have them say hey i want that person on my team so teams are going to be built very differently you're going to be have you're going to have cross functional capacity what have i done in my life i've done a ton of things started with teaching went into logistics in the navy uh, did radio jockeying in college played basketball almost became an athlete athlete uh, made a film wrote a book wrote poems did art latch on to something that you can hold on to when you're feeling low things that you enjoy doing that is going to retain your sanity for you because the pressure of what you're going to be learning in these two years is nothing compared to the pressure you will get once you step outside but when you want to connect the dots i'm just going to take next last 2 minutes when you want to connect the dots to what you aspire to do beyond your mba identify that now think over it what am i going to be really good at is there a problem i can solve latch on to it do your thinking do your writing put down your notes keep it go back to it 
It's like a thinking board that you should have. Yeah, but retain that thinking board because it's going to help you later to get into the institutions you want to join, the corporates that you want to join, the organizations that you want to join, or to do your own business. You have to be able to identify the niche, and that does not happen overnight. But if you want it overnight, ask me how. We can have a separate conversation beyond it because that's what I do now. I do talent mapping. But the truth is, don't become an expert at everything. Pick something that is valuable, latch on to it. There is a space for it. Thank you, I'm done speaking. idea I believe is where a student should invest time in knowing their capabilities, their capacities and I think one skill that you have uh, very clearly uh, articulated is agility, adaptability is something that all, all these students including us I think, we all need to have. So thank you, thank you very much uh, for this wonderful uh, uh, sharing of experience and the idea. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for such wonderful insights. I'm sure my junior batch, as it is about to start its MBA journey, will hold on and latch on to your words and remember them. Now, we have Mr. Farasatullah Khan with us, who will be the next panel member with over 26 years of experience in diverse industries a decade of sales experience, followed by learning and development roles. Prior to SRL, so has worked in industries like DuPont, Bosch & Lom, AstraZeneca, Rambaxi, and Klaxo Smith kind. He is passionate about training, learning, and development. Understanding people and behavior is a strong interest area other than reading and traveling. A foodie, though health conscious, he completed his graduation in life sciences, post which he completed his postgraduate human resource management course. We welcome you, sir. So, thank you so much, Lieutenant and Sandhya, for setting the context so well and also helping me understand that, yeah, in a panel discussion, one can stand as well. <laughs> so, so my biggest worry was that I have to sit and speak and I'm very poor at that. So first and foremost, it's my big pleasure to stand among this fountain of potential. A round of applause for all of you. As, as you saw that, that we are a set of people from very diverse and definitely we are going to share a lot which will help you that how you are going to shape your career ahead. A lot of change. So we, we talk of Gen X to Gen Z and you know we are, we are different people, different generations. <coughs> However, certain things they remain constant. So when we are at the corporate and when you join us, our expectations are that you will be able to collaborate better you will be able to connect with people better. And that's why I chose people skills. But unfortunately, that is a very vast topic. People skills in itself is a very, very big thing to talk about. And in the slot which has been given to me, I would pick just one simple aspect of people <coughs> skills, and that is communication. A very, very important skills. We attend workshops. Right? Sometimes we browse the net, how we can become an effective communicator. Many a times we feel that a good communication is our ability to speak well. To be even more precise, how good I am in English, my verbal ability, my voice modulation. Definitely that is, that is definitely part of good communication skills. But at the very same time, sometimes I wonder God has given me how many years? Yeah. Huh? What does it mean? 
We have to listen. We, we are taught how to speak. Yeah? Our parents have put a lot of efforts in helping us making speaking. And when we become teenagers, they say, Suntani. <laughs> and I say, when did you teach me how to listen? Yeah? Very, very important aspect of communication, my dear friends. So I would like to refer to a quote by George Bernard Shaw. The single biggest problem in the communication is the illusion that it has happened. Got it? Yeah? So listening is to understand. So I would very strongly emphasize one word and that is called as empathy. I think I'm, I'm, I'm sure we all of understand about empathy, yeah? And if you go for the Google definition like it, putting yourself into the shoes of the others. Empathy means connecting to that level while we are communicating. And very importantly when I am restricting myself to listening. So we listen, we don't just hear, we listen to understand. We listen to understand the perspective, we go deeper into that. And how many times do we listen without maintaining an eye contact in today's terms? How often does this happen that we are talking to someone yet looking at our own mobile phone? A lot of misunderstanding can happen. We can build perspectives, we can build perception because we do not understand. And we can understand well when we communicate better. And when, when I say communication, I hugely lay emphasis on listening listen to understand. So we have got like uh, two notorious things inside ourselves. There's this one which keeps speaking inside. We say, hey, yeah, nice meeting you. Ah, morning is safe. Yeah? Another thing is like uh, judging the people. You as a youngster, you join an organization, you find somebody like very senior, yet at a very junior position, and you you, you judge him. And with that judgment back in your mind, you are talking to him. You are communicating with that person. Will you be able to connect with that person? Tell me. It's, it's very, very important. So one side is listening and another side is speaking. And in speaking, I'm, so I'm not like saying that speaking is not a good thing. Yeah, or it is like very less of the communication. Speaking itself again, like it has got various element into that. So one side is the what of that, like the, the selection of words, your verbal ability, and side by side is how of that. How do you communicate? How do you talk? How do you converse? Your tone, your rate of speech, your pauses. So so this this a lot in it. But at the very same time, how will I become a better communicator? <coughs> yeah? It's a, it's a skill or a knowledge? Skills. Communication? Skills. skills. And how do we learn skills? Just by knowing? <laughs> by, <laughs> by practice. So I think almost all of you would be knowing theoretically how to swim. Theoretically, yeah? How to keep your body aligned, how to move your hands, how to flip your feet, yeah? Can we all like take a dive in 15 feet deep? But we know, and knowing is not enough. Doing is, and as you rightly said, that it is practice. And there's a, there's a very old saying, pre-Gen X era, practice makes a man? Is it true? Is it true? Uh, have you seen some people walking like, like that? Have you seen people walking like that? Yeah? Why, they, why do they do so? Because they have been doing this over the years. They were practicing walking. Yes or no? In a way. Pra practice does not help us to improve, but the right practice. 
the right practice. So when will we practice? When after our graduation, when we go to some uh, corporate house, they sponsor us for some great communication skills workshop, we learn the tapes and then we go for practice. Is that so? How many of us now know that we should be a better listener? Yes, we know that, right? This is a huge opportunity for all of us that we can rightly practice. So you are in the beginning of your business course and I would wish that when, when you come out of it, you are excellent <laughs> communicators, best of the listeners. And how you can do that? By right practice. Every day, every day you have got huge opportunity before you. You meet diverse set of students, your faculty members and other staff. Every night take time to reflect. How many times did I interrupt someone? Has that happened that I was talking to someone without ensuring an eye contact and I was on my mobile? Yeah, can we do that? Side by side, how did I speak? Whether my tone was correct, whether my selection of word was correct. Yeah, very simple basic thing. But we can definitely do that. We can become better at that. Are you there with me? Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, somebody will walk like that and somebody will walk like that. That happens. That happens. When we meet people, they behave differently because we become what we repeatedly do. So I'll end with a quote that communication works for those who work at it. So will you? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for such great insights. Your emphasis on communication and right practice is something we at BMU continuously focus on. Now we have a third panel member, Ms. Arshna Bharadwaj, who will be speaking on attitude required to be a high performer in corporate. She is the head HR of Interglobe Air Transport and is responsible for leading HR strategy and organization including talent management, learning and employee relations. She brings with herself 17 years of varied experience in establishing HR operations and talent management for large multinational organizations across banking, global travel, IT service and software product companies. Prior to joining IGAT, she served as Director Human Capital Engineer at Engineer.ai. Before that, she has worked with Click Software, IBM, Bank of America in different HR leader roles. We welcome you, ma'am. Because I am from Delhi University, in the end we will study only from the Kunjis. 
Okay. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to just give you guys, especially the last benches, because that's where I used to sit. Uh, one or two or four or five pointers, which beautifully have been put by uh, two of the guys here. And I'm just going to do a repetition. So we are going to do a revision of whatever these guys have said. That's what we are going to do. Simple. So that, you know, you can remember it even when the session is over. Because generally what I've seen, the retention is around one or two person. So I'm going to be a, a kind of a person who's going to get you guys remember what these guys have just said. That's what we are going to do. Are you in, with me here? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so I want to ask you one simple question. How many of you have seen the movie Tamasha? Okay, so what was the theme of the movie? The theme of the movie was very simple. There was a guy, a very good looking guy for the women folks here, Ranveer Kapoor. And um, he was someone who was not happy doing what he was doing, right? He was in a 9 to 5 kind of a job and he never enjoyed it. And he was lucky because he got the pickup of Okay? So he he is able to understand what is the passion that he has and he is able to pursue that passion. He was able to follow that passion. Right? So what he was able to do eventually was to move over from what he was not enjoying to something that he loved and enjoyed. Right? That was one guy. So hold, hold on to this story. I'll give you another story. And this is, I don't remember the name now, but this guy is, this is also a real story. I don't know how much Tamasha is. I think for some of us, it might be a real story. But this one, which I'm going to tell you, is a real story. So this story happened way back in USA. Okay? So there was this guy who was really bad in what he was doing. Really bad in terms of studies. Not bad as an individual, but in terms of how his scores were. So he was bad in academia, he was he was not scoring well, his teachers didn't like him, his fellow students didn't like him, his seniors didn't like him, no one eventually in the college liked him. But one thing that this guy had, you know, like Ranbir Kapoor had the paka, this guy had his mother. You know, he had an immense love for his mother. So one day he was sitting with his mother, and while he was sitting with his mother, he, the, the mother comes over, talks to him and said, you know, I understand you're not enjoying what you're doing or what you're studying. But it's okay, why don't you go out and give an exam? So you might have heard of an exam called SAT, right? So he, he you know, eventually because he has a lot of respect for his mother, he goes out and he finally clears the exam. And you will not believe what happens. So once the scores were back, he realized he scored really high, very high. So when the, and when he was back in the college, he was suddenly the star. Imagine, you know, he's the star and everyone, including his, his fellow students, his teachers, his seniors, everyone was looking at him differently. The teachers thought perhaps, you know, we were bad. You know, we didn't give that kind of a attention to this guy. You know, you know we, we perhaps should give more attention to him. The fellow students uh, perhaps said that, you know, we didn't realize his potential or his talent. And similarly, uh, you know, the seniors. So, you know, what this guy realized? This guy realized perhaps that whatever he had been doing wasn't doing with full of his attention or his, uh, you know, with all his passion. So what he does, uh, you know, he goes back again to his class and he said, okay, let me start con concentrating, lit concentrating little more in what I am doing. And he becomes a better student. He started listening to stu students. He started doing stretch assignments for his seniors. He started working along with his uh, uh, juniors or his counterparts to resolve assignments and suddenly he becomes successful. And once you become successful, what eventually happens, you get better scores, you be get better placements and he reaches a certain position. Fast forward 20 years, okay, 20 years he's sitting, he's reading a newspaper while having his breakfast, he has a lavish house because he's a successful guy now and there is a pop up in the newspaper. What the pop-up says, says, you know, he's, you know, imagine he's sitting, he's having his breakfast, and the pop-up comes, and the pop-up says that the scores which came 20 years back for this exam were bogus; they were not right. Okay, and and they were wrong, and we admit our mistake. 
Now this guy, you know, was really perplexed. He didn't know what to do. He keeps the newspaper aside and he says, okay, let bygones be bygones. I am here because I realize what I am. So I think the biggest thing, I think um, Lieutenant Sanjay spoke very nicely about it. I think the biggest thing is, and I've written this here, is to follow your passion. How would you do that? You will realize whether, you know, there, are, there could be two things. One, you realize your passion, like Ranbir Kapoor did, right? The other thing is, you do whatever you are doing with full passion. Full, put your 100%. Even if you don't like mass, or even if you don't like data crunching, like I never did, but I had to eventually in the, in the position I am today. Even if you don't do that, you know, start putting your 100% there. And perhaps wonders can happen. But give your 100% to what you are doing. Right? Don't shy away from it. Don't shy away. Let's, okay, kya hoga? We'll fail, no? Let's see. But at least put your 100%. So what I have written is, here is that know who you are. Khud pa jana. That's most important. You know, once that would do, that would happen. The eventual next step. So first, first point is, know who you are. Follow your passion. Yaad daega na? Okay, the next one. Eventual graduation, the next point. What is the next point? Next point is, see, once you know yourself, you will start believing in yourself. Right? You will believe in yourself. Right? When you believe in yourself, what would happen? You will not be insecure about yourself. You will know what you are. So if someone is smarter, you will appreciate. Right? And then that's when that would happen. Collaborations would happen. You know, because you're not insecure. So you'll start collaborating with people. And you look at goodness in people. So once you believe in yourself, second would be, believe in goodness of people. People are generally nice. Remember that. And once that would happen, what would happen? Two things would happen. Everyone talks about creating networks. Everyone talks about creating content, uh, connects in the industry. How would that happen? Eight and sorry, suddenly you'll go and people will start connecting with you. No. Um, always remember that it's all about what's in it for me. When you're connecting with people, when you're doing network, you are kind of helping others and they realize the potential in you. Remember, mentors happen when they see a potential in you. Someone who's senior and at a certain position will not like to mentor you if you don't show that passion. Okay, so there are two things to, you know, to the eventual graduation from, from believing yourself to believing in goodness of people is also understanding how you build up the networks and also understanding how you make mentors. Okay, so that's the second point. Now what's the third point? What would happen after that? Once you realize your passion, once you realize you are, in, you are not insecure, you believe in yourself and believe in the goodness of people, the third eventual step naturally is that you, know, you have to keep it simple. You know, what happens most of the time, and I'm, I know that you will be eventually getting into jargons, you have to understand theories, that's, that's there. But you know, what is most difficult in life is to keep things simple. It's very, very difficult. Einstein used to say that if you can't explain it to a nine-year-old, that means you, you never understood yourself, you, you never understood it yourself well. Right? And the other thing is, you know, we talk about, you know, I sit on the table and I talk, I, I work in a promoter homegrown organization. And believe me, when I sit on the table with my promoters and we have these reviews, big reviews, okay, that would happen and we'll do everything, we'll do the ROIs, we'll do the NPVs, we'll do everything, we'll be working in the capacity, capability models, we'll be working on that parallelly. But you believe me, when I'm sitting with them, there are only two questions they ask me. What are those questions? How much is the profit? What is the cost? What is the margin? And I need to explain that. Bus teen questions. That's it. That's how simple it is. I know people, you know, people talk about monitoring. Have you seen uh, uh, your mothers or people, anyone in your uh, uh, you know, houses who are cooking? Aren't they doing monitoring every day? Aren't they going to the kitchen and checking kitty bari CTI so the food is cooked or not? That's monitoring, no? We talk about recruitments. Everyone was talking about great resignation. But anyone actually understood what a great resignation is? How did that happen? 
what were the what what were the root cause analysis how that it graduated to resignation greater resignation why there was a certain surge of demands for people did we actually get into it we didn't we just read okay great resignation people are getting lot of offers it's all over the place so i think what is important is whatever you are doing get your fundamentals right and that's the problem keep it simple वो किस वाला जो हमने पढ़ा था ना जिसको सोच के भी वो वेरी यू नो व्हेन वी वर यंग एट योर एज वी लव द लॉट ओ ये भी होता है कंसेप्ट बट देन कीप इट सिंपल इज द थिंग कीप इट सिंपल दैट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट वाज द थर्ड पॉइंट ओके नाउ द फोर्थ वन दैट आई हैव रिटन हियर इज एंड आई थिंक बोथ ऑफ देम काइंड ऑफ रियली सेज ऑन दैट वाज टू लर्न You know, you guys are in a very, very nice environment. When we were growing up, we did not have anything like a, uh, like a YouTube, YouTube or a podcast or you know uh, things like these. Nothing. We were learning from newspapers, and sometimes in a month, Business Week would come, Business Standard would come. Economic Times was a big deal for us. So Economic Times was a for us. Those were like the scholars. So I think that was that was the thing. when we were growing up so what is important is okay some of you have taken hr some of you have taken marketing but what is important there is lot of disruption that's happening in the industry today anything that talk about everything is app oriented everything it is digital everything so what is important is for all of you to understand what are the disruption that's happening in your own area in hr we talk about recruitments what are the tools that currently are available in the market for recruitments what is the work work day what is the work day how does sap work how is how is sap different than oracle is there any other tool which is different and uh, perhaps cost efficient and give me those uh, those features you know these are things you guys should know in your own area what's happening what's disruptive disruptive what is uh, what is not so i think that's another point which i would leave you with and last but not the least um, is that there is a place for everyone don't compete among yourself help each other you will see the world will change you know you will realize it i'm telling you because you know i when i was of your age i think i also wanted to do the best for myself and i thought you know i can be the best why is the other guy getting a better opportunity than me but you know eventually if you have passion if you are doing if you know what you are doing you will grow no one can stop that growth from you and you know when you will help people people will remember you and that's how networks all my friends are across different locations today and believe me we pass on the information to each other if there is an opportunity available we don't shy away from that it would happen always remember if you are genuine if you are nice people see through it that's that's very important very very important and you know since i am also the champion for diversity and inclusion i just want to leave one thought with all the girls who here i'm very happy to see so many girls uh, the thing is that you know what what happens is eventually when we are studying we are working we start off with a passion you know we we start off that we want to be this we want to be that and you know at one point in time we leave that passion because we understand as whatever the way we are wired the way the society is we understand that you know eventually we have to leave this and take care of our family that's okay i did that if you look at my linkedin profile you will see i have many breaks all through my career you no know, but what is important if you are good in your work people will call you back but never stop working keep working put that light up and remember that like i said it's a big ocean you will get your share but remember that you have to be a nicer human being at the end of the day and i say that when i say high performer i would i would change it because of sandhya here i'll say that be a happy high performer that's what i leave you with thank you so much so thank you uh, archana for uh, you know the big stuff And reiterating whatever has been said, I am sure now our students are not going to forget. So uh, just to you know summarize, I think it is important for the student to identify what their passion is, as was being said. Resolve the problems of others, and put.
put in 100% to whatever you are. Right? And the five important criteria that you again brought in. Know yourself. Build your network. Very, very important. Keep it simple. We as humans, as we grow old, make things complex. That is very, very right. So I think we all need to go back to our childhood and, you know, realize how simple we were and how can we bring that back in whatever we are into. Uh, being aware and updated of your area or wherever you would want to work. And last but not least, be comfortable, confident about yourself because there is a place and nobody is going to take your place. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for such wonderful insights. Now, among us, we have Mr. Monse C. Abraham, a renowned management specialist with expertise in marketing, branding, strategy, building innovation capability, thought leadership, organization effectiveness, and corporate social responsibility. Backgrounds for the entrepreneurs and business leaders consulted include Harvard, UPenn, Columbia, Cambridge World Economic Forum Young Global Leaders, Fortune 500 CEOs, IIMs, IITs, non-profit founders, and top-level management. Sir has served as a mentor of change for the first ever selected Mentor India Batch at the National Atal Tinkering Labs, Atal Innovation Mission. He mentored at MIT Solve 2021 Jacobs Foundation Conference Solvathon, Octavus Social Innovation Challenge. Sir has also been recently awarded with the recognition as a Global Ambassador of Human Rights and Peace by International Human Rights Advisory Council and All India Council of Human Rights, Liberties and Social Justice. Sir has scored 97 percentile in the 2014 Mensa IQ test, placing him in the top 3% IQ of the world. Sir is an automated and a currently speak six languages, including English, Hindi, Malayalam, Tamil, Spanish, and German. We welcome you, sir. Morning, everyone. It's an absolute honor and pleasure being here. Uh, what I will do is, you know, I really enjoy the q day part of it. So I'm just going to share a couple of things which would be like, you know, really uh, quick tips in terms of what would really help you or like succeed uh, in the short term, in the long term. And what I really look forward to is, you know, really interacting with all of you. Uh, no question is, you know, uh, say dumb or no question is too small. Uh, looking forward to, I mean, like, you know, really interacting in terms of the q and in terms of your genuine questions that you have. So I'm going to share a couple of things which I feel would be really helpful uh, regardless of, uh, you know, uh, whether you're just out of your MBA or you say you're 10 years down the line. Uh, these are things which are going to really help you uh, over time. So what I'm going to speak about is, you know, building a growth mindset, taking on opportunities in alignment with your interests and strengths, and building on your network. So these are three things which are really going to help you short term and long term. So I'll just go one by one over them. Uh, growth mindset basically means that you know most of us don't really know what we're capable of. Right? So when you're at, when you're in school or when you're in college or even during your first jobs, we really don't know what we're capable of. And I'll be extremely honest because I've been through all those phases. I've been through college. I've been through school. I've been through the first jobs where you know you don't really know and uh, uh, as to you know what all you're really really capable of and where your strengths lie. So almost all of us have capabilities which can be discovered, improved upon with practice, and grown over time. And I say this without exception. Right? So there's no one in this room who doesn't have skills which you don't know you currently have. Uh, we are also aware, we, we are not aware of all our strengths and capabilities right from when we are in school or college. Uh, it takes a fair amount of saying yes to opportunities and challenges you believe in towards knowing what we're truly capable of and especially more so when these opportunities and challenges are a bit outside our comfort zone. So basically it means that uh, if you stick to doing what you're super comfortable doing, it's extremely, it's going to be a bit difficult to really grow as a person, grow as an individual. So wherever you see opportunities where you feel that, okay, that's great, but you know, probably thoda sa difficult hai, thoda sa comfort zone ke bahar hai, that's where your real growth is. So say, supposedly today you can run something like say a 5K or an 8K, and tomorrow say one of the organization just reaches out and says that, okay, 
uh, we love what you're doing. You know, we have this campaign going on. Would you like to do a 21.1 kilometer race for us or a half marathon for us? And that's definitely outside your comfort zone, right? And you might not consider yourself a marathon or whatever it is, right? So when you say yes to more opportunities where you can fail, where there is the, you know, definitely the uh, possibility that you can fail, but you also know that, you know, okay, uh, let's let's take a let's take a try at this and let's see uh, you know if I can really push myself outside the comfort zone and see if that's something I can really achieve and uh, you know become the kind of person who can who can actually do a twenty one point uh, one kilometer half marathon kind of thing. So that's that's basically the way, way you're really going to grow. If you stick to something which is uh, purely where you're like hundred percent comfortable, great. Uh, you can you can you can do well. You can do all those things, but. To really stretch yourself to become the person you're truly be capable of becoming, you have to go outside your comfort zone a bit. So live, live and operate on the edges of your comfort zone and that's going to really help you a fair bit. Uh, when we take up the challenges also, it's it's definitely important to have the attitude that if we are attempt kar rahe to, we are going to put in a 110% attempt, right? So it's not going to be ki, okay, we said yes, but if we are, you know, a hota to hota, nahi hota, nahi hota. you definitely have to train, you definitely have to practice, you definitely have to uh, look at all the resources you have at hand to really live up to uh, the challenge you've taken on and uh, that's that's super important so just the last point on this try not to err on the side of believing that you have fixed capabilities and skill sets try working on a lot of things and operate on the edges of your comfort zone so uh, as rightly pointed out by you know some of the panelists uh, the more things you work on the more things you try out because there are a lot of things which we are not even aware of ki yaar ye apne skill set mein hai and these are things that we can really work on or really get results on so that's the first part of it building a growth mindset saying that okay we don't have fixed capabilities we don't have fixed skill sets uh, we all have you know different kind of abilities and we're just going to try a lot of things and figure out where is it that uh, you know some of the greatness lies inside Second thing which is going to really help you over the short term and the long term is taking on opportunities in alignment with your interest and strength. So it's not just purely interest, but also your strength. So as you realize that you're good at a few things, you have to try to take on more opportunities which are in alignment with them. Because if you really like doing some things and you don't really like doing some other things, it makes no sense to you know, really work on those things, right? So, uh, you know, I always say this, you won't have to be 100% at everything, right? You, whatever you're like super good at, you really pursue those opportunities and become really great at it. And the other things can always be I mean, like, taken care of by you know the next best person who's really good at that. And uh, that's something uh, you know which I would encourage you to do. So take on more opportunities which are in alignment with your interest and the strengths. So keep building on those, and it's going to happen two ways. Sometimes you know opportunities are going to come to you, and sometimes you have to go for the opportunities. So I'll just you know quickly dive into both of them. Sometimes the opportunities come to you. Ensure that you say yes more times than no to opportunities where you get the chance to work with incredible leaders. So it's not just that what you work with is important, what you work on and who you work with is also going to be super, super important. So if you get the opportunity to say, I mean, like, you know, really work with incredible leaders, see if that's something you really want to work on, negotiate with them if required, but, you know, see how you can really end up working with them. Uh, yeah, and the other times you have to go for the opportunities, right? So not, uh, you know, it's not going to happen that all of the opportunities are going to come to us. We really have to go after some of the opportunities where we might be still building some of those skill sets and people might not really know that, okay, we can really uh, deliver on those kind of skill sets. So if you don't ask, the answer is always going to be no. Uh, shoot your shots. It's perfectly fine to have more rejections earlier on. The ones that eventually do work out in your favor will make it all worthwhile. Uh, example, if you look at, you know, any of the movies like Silver Sister Lawn really going in for, you know, the Rocky series and how he really got his break and all those things, right? So you really have to go for, uh, you know, all those opportunities. Not everything is going to come to you. So be perfectly fine with rejections also because like I said, uh, early on, right away, you know, if you step out of school, right away, if you step out of college, not everyone is going to, you know, give you those chances. You have to take your chances. It's perfectly fine to get a no, but the people who do say yes, just ensure you give your best shot and keep building your track record in terms of, you know, what you can really make happen. Constant in both the scenarios, uh, you know, whether the opportunities come to you or you go for the opportunities, two things you have to be like super, super, uh, you know, uh, you know, you have to, you know, take care of them. One, prepare well, right? There's no half-hearted effort. No one really appreciates or, you know, you know likes seeing half-hearted efforts out there. Prepare well, deliver with all you have got and go the extra mile. So it's not, so, so what will really differentiate you in the long term is, you know, if you have, say, a specific, uh, you know, expectation set up, just meeting the expectation will not really get things going for you. 
uh, where people start talking about you and you know really get, getting those opportunities is where you go beyond the expectation set. So uh, you know that's something which will always help you. Don't just settle for what's asked of you. Go beyond what's asked of you. So always go the extra mile. Second. Ensure that the ones who were kind enough to give you the opportunity feel great about having shared that opportunity with you. So this is a, like a no-brainer. Uh, try hundred times of a, out of hundred that people who have been kind enough to you know show faith in you and give you those opportunities, you really give it your best, and they're the loop in terms of you know how you're really taking on those opportunities. So that's something which is going to really help you in the uh, short term and the long term. So this is the second one, taking on opportunities in alignment with your interests and strengths. Because you know the more you keep working on it, just like a muscle, yeah. So the more you keep working on it, the better you become, and the, you know the more the people will know that okay, you really have the skill set. The last one is building the networks. So again, you know you could be the greatest innovator in the world, but if no one really knows that you know you have this incredible product or you really have this incredible skill set, none of the opportunities would really come to you. So the third thing, which is really going to help you super long term, is you know building on your networks. Uh, if you and building on the networks, I, I feel that you know sometimes it has a negative connotation. It doesn't have to be. The basic idea is that if you become a person of value, people want to associate with you. So the idea is not to take something from the other person, but the idea is you know if you have something where you can uh, create win-win situations. If you were to reach out to any of the leaders and they look at the proposition and they look at you know what you have done and what the track record is. They are more inclined to say yes to say saying you know taking up that meeting with you. So if you become a person of value and it takes a long term, so there's no overnight success. You have to put in your uh, you know due effort. You have to put in your hours, weeks, months, years, and uh, eventually you will get there. But again, because you're working on what is of interest to you and what is it that you know really inspires you and energizes you, this is what you are typically meant to make happen. Uh, as long as you're someone uh, whom people are comfortable being associated with, you keep sharpening your capabilities and create win-win situations and bring value to the table. One will find that a lot of the incredible leaders are kind with their time and many a times opportunities. So be someone when you know uh, you're connecting with someone. Try to create value for them. Ensure it's a win-win. Ensure that you really respect their time, especially if these are leaders. I mean, like you know, if you. Uh, really looked up to them for a super long time. You've read about them, and you get the chance to really interact with them. Ensure that you really, uh, you know, making the best use of the time. Now, I'll just uh, share a, a few quick tips in terms of how you can build the networks. You know, being in school, college, right, and later on also. So, some of the avenues include taking on responsibilities. You know, with some of the college clubs and relevant non-profits of interest, where you will have the opportunity to come and connect with some of the leaders via the initiatives you take up. So, for example, this event was put up by. A batch of uh, responsible students out here, right? So you know you would have the chance to really uh, get exposure to you know really connecting, making happen, and I mean like getting all the people over here, getting that expertise, but also having the connect with the leaders. Uh, second is you know it's also worthwhile taking on multiple internships. So it, it can be treated both ways. I mean like you know so I, I say this very very honestly. Uh, one of the biggest currencies you have is your time. Everyone has the you know same 24 hours. What's going to really differentiate? Uh, when someone looks at your CV or looks at your resume, you know how much were you really going to uh, willing to go beyond the you know uh, regular expectations? You know, going the extra mile in terms of the time and the opportunities given to you. So, say you have two years over here, you have the opportunity to you know really interact with a lot of companies. You have the opportunity to interact with a lot of leaders. Try to take on multiple things. You know, you know as many internships, as many opportunities to really work on things. And really make that CV stand out when someone looks at it, saying that okay, wow, I mean, like you know, they had this two years. It's the same two years for everyone, but they were really able to, I mean, like you know, really make use of you know all the extra hours uh, which they have, because it shows initiative. And initiative is something which a lot of companies really respect, a lot of leaders really respect. Uh, so that's there. And then uh, you know, being on some of the networking platforms helps. Become comfortable, you know, really going up and you know. Uh, saying hi to people and uh, you know really really uh, you know talking to people and uh, attending events and initiatives which are of interest. So again, I say this you know go go forward for initiatives which are of interest and which cater to your strengths. So all of these are uh, you know in alignment with your uh, interests and strengths. Uh, lastly, I just leave you with the point that if you are someone who is respectful of people and plays fair, you will automatically build networks way beyond what you might consciously try to cultivate. Uh, I wish everyone here the very, very best, and I'm looking forward to the Q&A session where we can have a more, uh, you know, interactive, uh, you know, exchange. I'm looking forward to this. Wishing you everyone the very best. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, Ashish, for sharing your thoughts upon growth mindset, and I think uh, very, very relevant at this point of time.
The only thing is we do not acknowledge that we have kissing. And I think when you are saying that we need to work in the uncomfortable zone, that is where we know what our capabilities are. So thank you so much for bringing in that point. So there are a few pointers that we rarely stressed upon and I'm just going to uh, retake it. So uh, growth mindset. So build a growth mindset. Come out of your fixed mindset. Use your strength for your growth. We all have strength. The only thing is we need to align and streamline it. Never ever fear to ask questions. Right? It is okay to get rejected. It is okay to fail because we only get rejected when we try. So that is absolutely fine. That is not good. Uh, do your homework well, deliver best. So I think, and the last point that you said, let people know who I build your network. Let people acknowledge and value you. So thank you for bringing me this. Thank you, sir, for providing us with such a wonderful perspective on how to take opportunities and align them with our interests and strength and to focus and your focus was the most important focus was on how to build networks. We are thankful for that. Now we have the last speaker for this session, Mr. Natwa Kadir. But before that, I would just like to apologize to sir for the small slip up. Sir is the general manager and head center of expertise, people strategy division, Hyundai. So will be addressing us on gearing up for tomorrow, changing business facets, and responding job market. So is a seasoned human resource professional and an impactful leader with a versatile experience of 15 plus years in the field of human resource. He started his career with Hyundai Motor India Limited as a management trainee and has climbed the career ladder within a short span of time, making him one of the youngest leader in the company. Presently, he is designated as general manager and heading center, heading center of expertise, People Strategy Division. With his deep understanding of the auto industry in general and Hyundai Motor India in specific, he has created an excellent value proposition in all the roles he has played so far. Strategic planning and policies, talent management, change management, organization development, talent acquisition, employee engagement, manpower management, compensation, organizational transformation, employee industrial relations, compliance, external liaisoning, and culture management. Besides this, he has a passion to deliver the best result and this has helped him carve a niche for himself, not only in the company, but in the HR fraternity at large. We welcome you, sir. school and do some teaching. So we four of us decided that you will speak this, you will speak this in a larger contest. What happened is uh, there was a principal who called me in this room while one of my couple of my friends were actually teaching them. The whole context was we teach them about half an hour. So I was quite busy with the principal. The moment I come back uh, to the room, so when I start, students say, ye ho gaya, ye ho gaya. And the second, I started the second part. He said, this is also done. The whole I'm trying to say that I actually do not have anything else to speak because all this panel have already done. <laughs> I, I was actually thinking, okay, let me put, uh, let me put from start. She has actually covered 30% of it this afternoon. And we have the others who have come and completed about 80%. And then I said, let me have this 20%. But she was sitting right at the corner, summarizing, connecting the dots. <laughs> I had nothing left to speak. Well, as promised uh, during our discussion that I'll trim whatever best possible and I'll not do the repeated one. Let me uh, start with a couple of stories uh, because that goes well. So I remember a, a story when I read it long back. So there were two workers started to walk on a railway track. They reached to the railway track and they start doing the work. So suddenly what you see, a train comes on the other track and stops. 
the aircon uh, gate opens and a guy comes out and says, hey Dave, can you come inside? So uh, the quiet, the three, four workers along, they're looking at Dave. So Dave looks at uh, himself, he says, I'm coming. So the, the guy goes inside while the workers were quite surprised. Hey Dave, we're not able to understand. The train stops, the guy pops out and says, Dave, can you come inside? Well, he says, I'll come back and explain. So Dave goes inside the train. And uh, the workers outside probably hear a couple of noises, a couple of claps, a couple of, lot of cheers. The moment Dave comes outside, the same person who stopped by and came to the door, comes back to the door, waves his hands, and the train starts and leaves. Out of curiosity, the workers were quite surprised. How come a train would stop for a worker, Dave? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the person who stopped the train was Jim Murphy. And he was none other than the chairman of American Railways. So after listening to this worker, got amused. Why would the chairman would stop for a worker? Dave opens up and says, me and Jim Murphy came together for the job. I came for $1.75 and Jim Murphy came here to pay his career. And that's the difference what we're talking in today. In today's context, this is all about the life for you and forward. You need to decide you want to be a Dave or you want to be a Jim Murphy. Well, I'm not here to I'm sure a lot of panel members have brought a lot of valuations. But the end, it has to be you who has to take a call and shot on what you really want to do in your life. Well, I wouldn't speak much of jargon because, well, I don't have much. But I'll talk about my own self. How, as a person, I was a failure and what I am today. I probably brought down the, the 12 roots and if that helps you, would be great. The rule number one. Be courageous to fail because the sky is the limit when you rise after the fall. Well, most of you sitting at this and listening to us, on my context, it's very different. I was out of my college without knowing what I'm actually going to do. Most of my friends actually knew it, but they want to do where they want to head or to. I was actually in the no man's land, not knowing anything, but I have to do it. I've completed my graduations. I have done all that what is possible, sitting at home for three months, doing nothing, and you know, all that set of words which comes to you to compare yourself, that see what he's doing, what has to be. So that's been, I've been hearing for a very long time, and then probably I decided where I need to be. Well, today, I am today what I am, and I feel that the failure has brought me to this stage. I did my CFA Chartered Financial Analyst, I worked it for an audit firm, didn't work out and then I feel that that's what's not what I want to be. I'm not a next stop jockey to sit and work with the numbers. But I'm the one who wants to be at the field and that's where I choose to be a master's degree, be persuaded and happy campus placed and I'm with Hyundai for about 16 years now. Well, 16 years looks pretty long, two great period with a one organization in today's context. But until unless you love what you're doing, it doesn't matter which organization you're associated with. So, Sky is the limit for you. It doesn't matter if you're failing it. Be happy if you're failing it because the more you fail, the more you learn. Rule number two, don't follow the crowd. Crave your own path. My CFA is only precisely because the finance was the most happening thing and the people were sitting in the finance were actually doing the great numbers. One of the panel members rightly said, just do what you like rather than following what is being influenced to. It doesn't matter, you know. Focus on your strength and your potential. That will lead you where you want to be in your life. And that's that's the reason today where I am is because I realized that that's not my cup of tea. And I was going and boiling the entire ocean. The third is perfect job is a myth. The grass is always greener on the other side. You may actually look at it, say, hey, uh, I would rather like to become what the Lieutenant Sandhya has probably done it, or probably one of our co-panel members. But we definitely do, we do have our own stories. But try to find what is in view. You, you may always be, feel that what is on the other side is much more greener, much more flatter, but the reality may be very different. It's very important that what you really want to do in life. 
high salary perks really does not matters at all i remember joining my organization in my batch was the least paid you've got to prove yourself can you be after 15 years be the highest paid and that's 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 on your side best poster tape the best potter shaped when it is wet and not when it is dry well you are exactly in the right stage you know one of the co panel members who the last one who spoke so beautifully you know honestly speaking he's he actually told exactly what you need to do to be a successful person maybe uh, this college is actually a platform where you all need to be shine yourself this not just college but every event of it you need to realize that you can contribute and make yourself count you need to know what your strength of areas areas of weakness as well and that can only be known when you put yourself in a situation otherwise it's not going to work out yes and she said that book is only the key but you got to go flower yourself and understand what's the world is for you today uh, i've been interviewed about 20 25000 students in span of last about 10 years and all i can see the maximum written glossary words on the resume and they don't able they are not able to even float on it and the expectation here is for you to get into the details of it it doesn't matter they have they are will said it in the middle of time it doesn't matter that you should be knowing the world but you should be knowing at least one thing and that's a world in it that's something very very important in your resume you really need not have to write lot many words you all have to write only the things which you're good at it. and i'm sure that's going to take you to places where not always the bird with same feather should flock together try and build your network he rightly said build your network is very very important that's going to really build yourself because the moment you i'm sure today even when you're sitting it's if 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 i'm not wrong you're sitting with people who whom you know at thirty try to spend your time with people whom you don't know uh, let me be very very clear to you the most difficult people whom you be with you will have you will have something to take back home on every day in other words it doesn't matter if you have enemies it doesn't matter people who talk about bad at you still go ahead because the more you have enemies the more you have different people it's more you will learn at the end of the day and the most you will prepare yourself for the tomorrow well rule number 5 look beyond what you see i remember uh, seeing the movie lion king which it's all about look beyond what you see it's very very important that you will be have to focus on your education getting campus placed getting high salaries the next agenda would be on the card would be getting married well uh, <clears throat> i still have two options uh, for the marriage maybe it out of the context of this talk there's always two options to marry a richer one and become a richer or rather uh, on the other side <laughs> but i i i took the second one for sure well it's very important in the last 15 years when i look back well i've achieved what i really want to be but what i missed out is very important have you actually kicking out your hobbies life to today maybe i i was a car racer and i quit that car racing just immediately the moment i got the job so when i turn back and i look at it i could be a much more better in being a car racer so i just want to tell you that doesn't matter the age doesn't matter where you are keep kicking it keep going it keep your hobbies alive and the moment your passion your hobby becomes your love and job i'm sure you will become the best earning potential in this world and please google it the maximum people who earn as a professional be it footballer cricketer or an author have actually followed their hobbies and passions sixth rule getting self assured having a job is the biggest mistake which you can actually do it i have done it let me be tell you that moment the moment think that we have got the job like the settle no the life begins right there and i'm sure the most of you most of them are actually brought into point the moment you get in the corporate world it is indeed complex and a dirty world itself but that will make you the best of what you are so so it doesn't matter does the the comfortable should not be that out of comfort should be there in every day michael jackson said that if i do not learn one step daily i do not go for sleep and that made him a michael jackson so you need to remember that every night when you sleep you need to ensure that have you contributed something 
to yourself. It doesn't matter if you're contributing for an organization or someone else, but have you done it for yourself? It's very important. Like best principle comes from the word Johnny Walker, which says the tagline of keep walking. I love Johnny Walker. <coughs> but I don't drink though. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a very uh, diplomatic way of putting on the stage, but I do. Well, uh, <laughs> day one, on my joining, I was sitting on a couch. Day two, I was sitting on a couch. Day three, I was sitting on the couch. Up to a day 10, I was sitting on the couch. Let me tell you, if you don't know something, something is given to you, you will still manage. But the biggest challenge is when you do nothing and sitting in one place at 10 days. I have done that. And thank God after 10 days a person realized that I've actually joined in 10 days and said, oh, you're joined. So thank God you realized it after 10 days. <laughs> but let me be very clear that, you know, life doesn't stop because nothing is working around you. You know, no support from the system. There is a possibility. I, I read a meme a couple of days before. When nothing good on, on, on your side in your life, just blame the university. That's all. <laughs> so that could be the best one to do it. But let me tell you, I did it the other way around. So I actually blamed, I looked at my own failures and today found out where I really need to be. It's very, very important that I am sure, and I've been confidently telling you that one after some times, your university will, university will stop responding to you. Your parents will stop responding to you. Your so-called, all your friends would stop reaching you. There is a possibility that the entire support system around you would not work. And that's where she actually talked about a question, right? She, she said that word, if you can recall. Absolutely. That's very, very important in her life that, you know, it's just keep walking. The moment you keep, just keep walking, your life will work. You don't have to really do a rocket science. When you just keep walking, you will learn that you will know to survive it. My simple questions to all of you, who taught you to walk when you were a small kid? When you were crawling, who taught you to walk? Yes. Ram, please go and clear your signs and again, it was not parent, it was you who decided to walk, so you were walking. It is a myth that parents teach you walking, that's not the fact. It is you who decided to walk and so you started to walk. It is the same thing applies in your life and principle as well. If you decided to walk, then journey is never going to stop and nobody in this world, even without any support system, you will be keep walking. Well, that a rule number eight, a leader who cannot persuade is a manager. Well, you will be questioned the moment you come into the corporate life that what you can bring in value addition, how you can be a leader. And the leader is the one who's looked up at a vice president, director. No, that's again a myth. A leader is, can be as well as in a management training. It's all important that how you're going to make a difference, and that difference you're going to do it right here. Well, if just a panel before, a panel member before me just spoke. Take the best of the opportunity, giving it to your beat anything. Never say no for it. Go for it. Doesn't work. It's okay. But I'm sure there's something to learn, and you will learn what is leadership and being initiative is all about. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Uh, there's a book, and it's a famous quote by. Job. So don't wait to be get served. It's a simple philosophy. When you go, do you go for marriages? Yes. I love going for marriages, not for seeing the bride and groom, <laughs> that's because I enjoy eating the delicacy there. So you do go to marriages, right? Yeah. Yes. Can someone tell you uh, to make you sit, then put a plate on it, and then serve you? Yes, they used to do. Gone by the days. Those were the days where it used to happen. It's not going to happen. It's food is yours. If you're hungry, just go grab a plate and take on it and have it. The similar goes, when you go for internship, don't expect people to come and teach you. The world is yours, yours. go grab and take it. Beg, borrow or steal, doesn't matter. It's your career, she's keep doing it. It's very, very important. Until unless you're not hungry at all, you're not doing that at all. Integrity is when nobody's seeing you. Well, it's very important, you know, I, I remember the days when uh, one of my friend who was pretty, uh, we used to call him in a Hindi, uh, uh, very ugly, but let, let me not put it here, it's, it's unparliamented to do so. <laughs> but let me be one thing very clear, I've actually observed him. Whenever he used to be out from his bath, 
I don't know what he was used to look at the mirror. And then I probably realized it, it's not him. Each one of us keep looking at the mirror. Why? The only reason you keep looking at the mirror when nobody's around you, because you feel you are the most beautiful thing happen in the world. I'm sure if you ask these questions to your mom, she will say you, you are the most beautiful son and the most beautiful daughter. Indeed you are, because you have to look yourself as an individual and unique. At a similar context, it's very important as an integrity is not when somebody is seeing you. Integrity is when somebody is not seeing you. It's the same thing falls for your beauty as well. So when you're studying it, when you're doing something serious, you're making efforts, it's just don't do it just because somebody is seeing you. Somebody is going to gauge you. Somebody is going to measure you. No, just because you wanted to do it. And that's integrity is after when you do it for others, let's do integrity to yourself. And that's something that's very important. Rule number 11, sometimes your weakness can be your biggest motivator. Well, I remember the days I was called in 11th standard to come and say word of thanks. I stood on the stage for about 15 minutes, sorry, five minutes. And I didn't speak a word. While there was a, well, there was a teacher who was actually motivating me to speak a word, I didn't speak a word. And all I said, thank you, and left that stage. In the next three days, I didn't go to school with a state of embarrassment that I would not be able to face it. And that's the day I decided that I'm going to work on this. And that's been the day that I've never felt it shy to speak as much number of people I'm facing to. This this one of the incidents in me, that could be hundreds of incidents in you as well. The moment you decide to work on it, there is sky is the limit for you. The rule number 12 is fly high as you want because you will never forget who taught you to fly. Well, uh, I, I just do that, you know, you are, I'm sure the moment you are out from here, you're going to be a big successful person in a couple of years, could be an entrepreneur, a couple of years, could be in best in class with an organization with a great position. But please never forget to appreciate who made you to fly. I. I just wanted to tell you it's very, very important that you need to be thankful, to be kind to people around you, be it your teachers, be it your professors, be it your parents, be it anybody around you who actually helped you to make what you are today. And always be kind whenever you can, right from the person who actually swiped this floor. Most of you would not remember, but it's very important the security gate person outside, has he have actually thanked you or probably when you're going home. Everybody does contribute to your career in some other way. It's very important that you be thankful to them. Uh, just remembering a story uh, before I conclude that there was a small bird which was a mother was seeing that as a storm is going to come, let me shift my egg, the eggs to another place. And it starts taking one after another. And the moment the storm hits very closer, very, very closer. So she has two eggs now, but she can carry only one. She tries all the efforts to carry with the two, but at the midway, she loses one. But she cannot go down because the moment she goes down, she would lose not just the one which is carrying it, but also the one who's alone left on the other side. She decides that may let me sacrifice the one for the life of three. Luckily, the egg falls, it, falls down on a dunk and saves, There's a, lives it with the chicken, hence, and it crawls on the ground forever. The man nearby sees it and sees it that it's a bird which is actually flocking around with those hens. And it says to bird, hey, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to fly. The bird says, no, I was born here. And that's how my life is. That's how I've been growing here. This is what is my life all about. It does all that water the person says, but the bird never repeats. So man with no options takes the bird on the top of the mountain and says, I have left with no choice to put you. And the bird says, cries it at loud, don't kill me. But the man with no options decides to do that too. He throws the bird from that mountain, from the peak mountain. The bird struggles, cries loud. And point of time, it realizes it has a feather to fly and goes up in the sky. You are just one among them. Those, those professors, those teachers could be that. 
But before such thing happen, put yourself who you are. That's all for me. Thank you so much. However, I would want to bring in, even if it is repetition, I think one principle of learning is repetition is what makes something happen. So I think I'm sure there are concepts which we will have to do it again and again to make it all happen. Uh, so I'll just bring out the points that you just mentioned. First and foremost, decide for yourself. It is your life. You will have to take a call. Right? So that is where it starts. Be courageous. Take the challenges. Be the one. It's okay to fail. Right? Do not compare yourself with others, which is something which we all are into, all the more because of social media. So I think it is an important thing for us to remember that we are different people with different capabilities and we reach, you know, the places with the capacities that we have. So it's okay if we are different places, that is absolutely fine. Do not follow crowd again. Decide what is it that you would want to become. Let people do what they want to do. It is you who will decide your life. So please make choices for yourself because that is what decides your future. Very, very important. And I'm you know, thankful to Natwar that he brought this point. So the time is now. No? When I say the time is now, this is the perfect time when you need to work on yourself. It is not tomorrow, it was not yesterday. It is now, it is here, it has to be done today. That is what it is. It is okay if people dislike you. There is no person on this earth who is liked by 100%. No, that never happens. It's okay if people say bad things about you. It's okay. You know? That is what it is. And uh, the last, uh, which is very, very important, I think be grateful to people around you and the things around you. So I do always say that we become what we become because of the choices that we make. But please understand, when you are making the choices, there is a support system. There are invisible forces that is helping you take decisions that you take. Right? And one very important thing, I think which Natwar said, that it is you who learned how to work and not your parents. True. But please remember, there were parents to support you. And why I am saying this? Because teachers are important, they are not redundant. You will need us now and then. Right? So, this is on the life of that. Right? Okay. Thank you for the uh, you know, wonderful galaxy of thoughts that you brought. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for giving us that well golden rules, something we all need to hold on to. Now, we'll be opening the floor for question round, question and answer round, but owing to paucity of time, we'll be taking only two questions. Anyone who has a question? industry will expect from you is to be perfect. <laughs> Let me just lay it out to you, alright? That's just how it is. You know, every recruiter comes in wanting to find the perfect candidate. Uh, don't look at what the industry wants all the time. Okay? Uh, your catchphrase would be to look at the keywords, key things that they're looking for. But always remember, skills can be taught. An attitude cannot be taught. You have to have the right bent of mind. You have to have the right attitude.
to get to where you are. And one thing I would also emphasize here is, uh, this goes especially for the women, because we tend to uh, measure ourselves far more strictly than others, is do not self-reject. When you see a whole list of you know, um, responsibilities that the person has to carry out in an organization, we women, most of us tend to tick off everything. We want to tick off all the boxes before we even think of applying. Don't do that. Do not self-reject. Because if you're self-rejecting, uh, what's the point? You've already rejected yourself and you're going with that bent of mind, I'm never going to crack this. If you do not try, you will never find out. And here is a little trick for you, uh, which is what I did when I was 22. Uh, how many of you are 22 right now? Right, okay, majority of you, or plus, right? This is at the age of 22. When I went in for my interview, I was asked, why should we take you in? And I told them, because I'm worth every bit of it. I had no damn clue, let me just tell you. But I said, I'm worth every bit of it, so you should take me in. And they said, but we don't know. I said, you don't take me in and you'll never find out. And that's just exactly how I cracked every single interview. It is the confidence with which you can carry yourself, your own self-belief system. The industry may want everything out of you, but if you don't have the right mental bent of mind, this right attitude, please remember, nothing will work. Skills can be taught. I was just 22. I didn't know how to handle a gun. By the time I became 22 and a half, I could dismantle an LMG and probably hit somebody with it. All right? So it's just not about what you can or cannot do in the eyes of others. It is inside your head first. Clear your head first about it and say, hey, I am going to give it my best shot. But make sure you give it your best shot. Industry will expect tons from you. Industry still has no idea what they will expect out of you tomorrow. Two years from now, like I said, nobody will have an idea. But that attitude of yours can take you forward. And that's what you need to focus on. Thank you. Any other questions? Good afternoon, Ms. Peter and Madam. Uh, actually, I have a very simple question. So, uh, basically, how can uh, like we express any idea or thought to someone in an organized way? It's a very good question. And those who think about it, they do it better. So, many times what happens that we think that we are doing great and we, we present our idea and we are taken by a surprise that it was not presented well. And the one who is thinking that, that how can I do that, that, this itself is the beginning of presenting your idea in best possible way. So this was the, the uh, mindset part of that, that yeah, you are on the right track. And then coming back to the expectation of the audience. So you would like to have some knowledge about the audience. You have to like understand what are the expectations. You may do a mock. You may bring some devil's advocate out of your friend circle. Ask them to challenge you. So there are multi multiple ways to do that. But yes, if you think that how can I do that, you can definitely do that well. You'd like to add? Thank you, Parasa. Uh, totally agree with what Parasa said right now. Uh, the main thing is, you know, whom are you presenting to and you know, how much you really want the idea to be useful to them. So if you really think from the perspective of really taking care of, uh, you know, whom you're presenting to from their point of view and I mean like in a way which is understandable to them. So for example, if you're presenting to, uh, say, you would have seen one of these series on YouTube, right? So uh, a scientist explains concepts to someone in school, someone in college, an expert. So, so you have to tailor it totally to your audience and you really have to know uh, your idea inside out. 
because uh, you know if you can go into nitty gritties at the same time you can you know totally zoom out you would be able to take care of depending upon what needs to be taken care of i hope that answers the question thank you sir I would now like to invite Professor Jaskaran Arora, Dean School of Management, to please come up on the stage and present our panel members with our token of appreciation. call upon our first panel member lieutenant sandhya surya <laughs> now i would like to call upon mr farasatullah khan Our next panel member, Ms. Arshna Bharadwaj. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Monse C. Abraham. Member, Mr. Network Adil. Thank you, ma'am. I would now like to thank all the panel members for sparing time for this informative session. Our moderator for today's fire, Friday fireside chat, Dr. Richa Mishra. Dr. Ritu Chekara, Professor Jaskaran Arora, orientation team, volunteers, technical team, helping staff, and the batch of 24 for being such attentive listeners. Thank you all.